say, do you like mystery stories? Sure. The mystery is time, space, matter, and energy. Physics. Have you ever tried to define time? Did you ever drop a steel ball into a bowl of milk? Yeah. <laughs> to study science, we must venture beyond the ordinary. And when we do, it opens up a whole new realm. It's going to take someone with a spirit of adventure. No. <laughs> Daring, discipline, ingenuity, and imagination. Imagination? Dad's always been one for the facts. The truth is stranger than the strangest fiction. Robotic explorers have found evidence of water, a key ingredient for life, on Mars. The light reaching your eye tonight left the Andromeda Nebula over a million years ago. And it has been traveling like a wailing banshee through space ever since. I'm no Edison or Einstein. Edison may not have been a scientist when he was your age either. Study science and create a new generation of innovators and pioneers. Hi, I'm Dr. Jessica Clark, and I'm a physicist from the American Physical Society. I'm here in a physics lab at the University of Maryland where students just like you are learning about the wonders of physics. The science of physics is very useful and interesting. We use it to make car engines run, to fly to the moon, to make cell phones, computers, video games. In fact, physics helps us understand how everything works in the world and in the universe. If you've ever wondered why objects fall to the ground on Earth, but float in a space station, if you've ever wondered how airplanes stay in the air, or why the sky is blue, then maybe you should learn more about physics. You may want to become a physicist yourself. And what does a physicist do? Well, if you could ask the most famous physicist of all time, what would he say? Puzzles. Science is the solving of puzzles. There is a huge world out there that stands before us like a great puzzle, full of mysteries piled one on top of the other. Science is the attempt to understand these mysteries with logical thought. And nobody loves a puzzle and a good mystery better than a physicist. When we find a puzzle, we look for clues in the only way we can, by what we see and hear and feel. We observe something happening in our house, in the world, in the universe. We measure. Then we use our imagination to explain why it happens the way it does. Some physicists use complex technology to study the universe. Others, like Albert Einstein, solve puzzles right at their desk with a pen and paper or a blackboard. The great physicist Galileo made a great discovery about the way a pendulum moves by watching a lamp swinging in church. To solve a puzzle, you must be curious and determined. Ask question after question until you come up with a theory that explains the puzzle. A good theory will uh, explain not only this puzzle, but also many other puzzles. In science, you just keep moving one step at a time, and you can understand many things that at first seem to be great mysteries. Einstein spent his whole life trying to understand the mysteries of the universe. There are still many mysteries left to explore. We hope you will want to continue where he left off. I know you've heard a lot about Albert Einstein. Do you know what he did? His great contributions to modern science 
began in 1905. We call this Einstein's miracle year because he came up with answers to three very important questions. Why does the dust jiggle in the water? What is light made of? What would it be like to travel at the speed of light? I was fascinated by these puzzles. If I could solve them, I could understand a little more about the way the world works. These answers revolutionized modern science. Let's look at these three important questions that had confounded scientists for many years. Why does the dust jiggle in the water? In 1827, the biologist Robert Brown looked at water under a microscope and found that small particles floating in water were moving around with a jittery motion. This came to be known as Brownian motion and no one knew why or what was causing it. Brownian motion was a puzzle. Why are these particles jiggling? Well, there was a theory uh, that the water is made up of molecules. Many scientists theorized that all matter was made up of very tiny molecules. But no one could see a molecule, nobody could prove that they really existed. I considered this puzzle of Brownian motion. First, I said to myself, what if molecules are real? Well. Molecules are too small to see, even under a microscope. But I carefully figured out how water molecules would move, and how they would bump and bounce off of each other, and how they would bump and bounce off of larger particles floating in the water. I created a theory that described exactly what we observed as Brownian motion. In 1905, Einstein looked at another interesting question. What is light made of? Many scientists, like Isaac Newton, thought light was made of tiny particles. Others were sure light was made of waves, like sound. Which was it? It is both. Light is made up of individual little bundles of wave energy. Little particles that can also behave like waves. Now we call these little particles photons. Einstein won the Physics Nobel Prize for his theory of photons. And 50 years after his discovery, scientists developed lasers using the knowledge he revealed. And last but not least, 1905 was the year of Einstein's most well-known achievement, the special theory of relativity, and the most famous equation ever, E equals mc squared. And he began with one interesting question. What would it be like to travel at the speed of light? Light travels at an enormous speed, 186,000 miles per second. If I traveled at almost that speed, right next to a beam of light, the beam of light should appear to be traveling only slightly faster than me. But it doesn't. The light beam still travels 186,000 miles per second faster than I do, no matter how fast I am going. How could this be possible? When I imagined possible solutions to this puzzle, I realized that the speed of light is always the same because when you are moving, time and space change. Time is measured more slowly and space becomes shorter. This may seem very strange, but it turned out to be absolutely true. It is a fascinating problem. You see, Time and space are actually connected. And the speed of light is always measured the same. This is the core of my special theory of relativity. Interesting things happen when you are moving so fast, you approach the speed of light. Everything seems the same to you. But other people who are not moving, when they look at you, they see you becoming flatter and flatter, and also, believe it or not, heavier and heavier, until you look to everyone else like a very, very flat pancake. A very, very heavy flat pancake. But Einstein also discovered in 1905 that not only are time and space connected, but matter and energy are also connected. 
This is shown in his famous equation. Ah, E equals mc squared. This equation tells us that matter, like this yo-yo, and energy, like the light from this lamp, can be thought of as being the same thing. The equation says that a little matter can be converted into a huge amount of energy. If this yo-yo could be converted into energy, it could power this lamp for millions of years. Einstein's E equals MC squared equation finally explained many mysteries, like how can the sun shine so brightly and so long without burning out? Because a little matter in the sun can produce a lot of energy. Einstein made many other discoveries later in his life, but 1905 was truly a miraculous year. Einstein proved the theory of molecules beyond any doubt. He finally showed what light was made of, and he expanded our understanding of time, space, matter, and energy. He discovered all these things without leaving his desk, using only his imagination and asking many, many questions. A physicist uses observation and imagination in the attempt to make an understandable picture of the world. If I have a gift, I believe it is that I am perhaps a little more curious than the average person. I want to know the truth about the world, and I am determined. I never give up on a problem, no matter how difficult it is, no matter how long it takes me, until I find some understanding. To be a great scientist like Albert Einstein, you have to be curious and clever, and you have to learn to think like a physicist. First, observe what you see around you. When you find something you don't understand, ask yourself, why is this happening? Consider all of the possibilities, ask questions, don't stop until you've found a satisfying answer to the puzzle. There is no shortage of puzzles. Each day, more and more observations are made and more and more facts gathered, many of which we do not understand. In our quest to solve these puzzles, we must stand on the shoulders of those who came before us. And remember, those who will come in the future must climb upon our shoulders, so we better give them something strong to stand on. The important things are to never stop questioning, to be curious and determined, and to always nurture the passionate belief that greater knowledge is possible. Ah. Uh.